हेलो वेलकम टू द सेल्फ लर्निंग पॉडकास्ट बाय डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह लेट अस स्टार्ट डिस्कशन ऑन यूनिट ट्वेंटी सेवन जेंडर एंड सोशल स्ट्रेटिफिकेशन एंड आवर टॉपिक इज कास्ट एंड जेंडर द थ्री बेसिक करेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ कास्ट आर एक्सक्लूजन और सेपरेशन दैट इज रूल्स गवर्निंग मैरिज एंड कॉन्टैक्ट विच मेंटेन्स डिस्टिंक्शन ऑफ कास्ट hierarchy that is the principle of order and rank according to status interdependence that is the division of labor which is closely tied to hierarchy and separation these three analytically separable principles of the caste system operate through units based on kinship women's lives are largely lived within family parameters the centrality of the family and household remains very important in their lives women's work contributes substantially to the occupational continuity of a caste group significant continuities in the link between the caste and occupation can be seen with respect to brahmin is still acting as a purohit for upper and middle level castes among artisan caste of goldsmith blacksmiths potters and weavers many are still using their traditional profession for their living and women are helping them directly or indirectly at their levels of work basket weaving is a joint activity of men and women in rural areas and small towns it is common for women from households of petty traders and shopkeepers to grind spices and prepare fries fritters and preserve for sale in the family shop it is a fact that occupational or continuity of a particular caste depends largely on women jajmani relations short term contractual affiliation between artisan and the service caste and the land owners cultivators and traders and relations of exchange among occupational castes a feature of many rural and semi urban areas function at the level of family both men and women render services and receive remuneration in cash and kind for their work we can see in every region of india there are specific untouchable castes whose women work as midwives these women along with the men of their caste share the essential task of removing pop- pollution of upper and clean castes the bond or contract which ties laborers to their masters is understood to include the services of both the husband and the wife the necessity of continuing with occupational work is an important basis for marrying within the caste women's contribution to occupational continuity is carried out within patrilineal limits and under the impositions of controls of caste a woman's education may also be restricted keeping the work demands and marriage market in mind in difficult times of the family scheduled caste women generally do works of scavenging but not the men it is held that the since women are used to doing domestic work for their own household can do similar kind of work for others the men feel that it is below their dignity to do such works or jobs among migrant families women are often the principal supporters of the family but the control are retained 
at this time also. Social and ritual matters are discussed and decided upon by the males of the caste within the neighborhood. Food and rituals Food constitutes a critical demand in the ritual items of the purity and pollution. The concern of purity and pollution centering on food begin at home. The prescriptions and prohibitions regarding the food for women are governed by principles of kinship, marriage and sexuality. Women play key role in maintaining the sanctity and purity of home. Notions of safety relating to both purity or pollution and the evil eye entail a variety of restrictions and constraints on women in the tasks of processing, preserving, cooking and distributing food. In situations away from home and their locality, men tend to be more relaxed about rules of commensality. In a similar context, women are both capered and watched over carefully and are expected to follow rules more strictly. There is a pervasive notion that the women never attain the level of purity of the men of their own caste. It is well known that traditionally women of twice born caste have been equated with Shudras who could not be initiated into the learning of Vedas. Marriage and sexual relations constitute a central arena in which caste impinges on women's life. The cultural apprehension of the vulnerability of the women and the emphasis on their purity and restrained behavior which emphasizes on limited interaction with opposite sex are important components of management of female sexuality in a caste society. The strong patriarchy in North India institutionalizes control of sexuality and fertility of women. In the case of an unattained woman, pregnancy is a disaster because in patrilineal society the issues of caste boundaries and her own purity are involved. Growing up to a female child is marked by severe controls, idealization of family roles and emphasis on female modesty and strong value attached to virginity of female. Women are expected to retain the purity of caste at all life stages. The pre pubertal phase is looked upon as instinct purity stage and it is celebrated in a number of ways like worship, worshipping and feeding virgin girls on 8th day of Navratri. This calls for restrained behavior on their part and emphasizes the need for protection and vigilance. In Indian society, restrained and controlled sexuality is a prerequisite for socially sanctioned motherhood. Even in urban areas, middle class women working in the public work sphere experience pressures to conform to the image of good women and face sexual harassment. The principles of sexual asymmetry underline the relationship between the caste, endogamy and dowry. The different fates of men and women in intercaste unions and the sexual abuse of women. Sexual mores and the restrictions are less severe in case of lower caste women. Men have mechani mechanism by taking purification bath and the ritual expectation of the offense to escape pollution which occurs through the sexual intercourse with a low caste woman. 
but the same is not accepted in case of upper caste female. She is banished, declared dead to the family. Intercaste marriages, especially in rural India, are still not tolerated and many cases of killing the couples have been reported in the recent past. Sexual violence against lower caste and tribal women is not an uncommon feature here. Amen Srinivas has pointed out that in contemporary caste society, cognate jatis tend to get telescoped to form a single entity for purposes of marriage. Caste both imposes constraints and creates the dominant ethos which underlies the practice of dori with Hindu society. The increasing social and economic differentiation has increased the demand and expectations on the part of the groom's family. Now let us wind up the session and take rest. Thank you very much for engaging yourself with the self-learning podcast.